So when we talk about equilibrium calculations, um, there's essentially sort of two or three main calculations that you'll learn, right? So the first one is uh, calculating the equilibrium constant, so finding k, um, and then you might have um, a question where they give you k and then you've got to back calculate and see what the equilibrium concentration is. And then there's a third type of question where you'll have to determine whether a system is at equilibrium or not. And that's where we get our Q value and then we compare it to the K value that they give us. So those are the three main types. Now, the interesting thing about this question is that it combines sort of one or two of these uh, different types of calculations. So let's jump into it and have a look. So it says at a certain temperature, the equilibrium constant K is 12.1, right? Um, and it's for that given reaction there, which is um, sulfur dioxide uh, reacting with oxygen to give us sulfur trioxide. And at the same temperature, you have one mole of sulfur dioxide and one mole of oxygen, and that's added to a one liter container, okay? Um, and at a point in time, uh, they found that the sulfur trioxide in that container was 0.7 mole per liter. Determine whether the system has reached equilibrium or not. Okay, so with this question, we should already be able to deduce that you're probably gonna need um, a Q value calculation here, right? And the reason is because we don't know if our our system is at equilibrium and we're trying to uh, determine to see if it is, okay? So zooming into this question, there's a couple of important things that we first have to realize, okay? So first and foremost, we have the initial amounts, right? And then we have um, we have this number here, which uh, tells us the amount of sulfur trioxide there is. And so there's probably gonna be a change component that we need to calculate. So if we construct our ice table, Normally we're used to seeing our ice table. So I like to call it a rice table because I like to write the equation at the top. So, or our reaction at the top. Okay, so writing our reaction, that's 2SO2 plus O2 to give us 2SO3, like so. Okay, and then initial change equilibrium. Now I'm just gonna put an asterisk here at the equilibrium bit and I'll tell you why that's the case in a sec, okay? So if I just draw a line there to separate our reactants from products, let's fill out this table from what we know, okay? So first and foremost, we need the initial sulfur dioxide and oxygen conditions, okay? And we should put those in concentration, but what we should notice about the question is they've actually given it to us in moles, but that's okay because it's in a one liter container. So we gotta make sure we convert these to concentration, which is just gonna be one mole per liter, given that it's one liter, okay? Um, normally what we do is we do, you know, concentration equals number of moles on volume. And so you take the number of moles and divide it by the volume. But in this case, cause it's one liter, it, it's fine. It stays the same, right? So it's one mole per liter. Okay. So our initial amounts are one here and one here. And because they don't tell us what the initial amount of sulfur trioxide is, we can just assume that's zero. Okay. So that's going to be zero. All right. So here's when it sort of gets a little bit interesting. And, um, what I said before about this equilibrium bit let's just put an asterisk there. The reason why I'm putting asterisks there is because it says at some point in time, the concentration of sulfur trioxide was measured to be 0.7 moles per liter. Okay, now we don't know if that's the equilibrium concentration or not, but we know there's been some sort of change, right? And if we start off with no sulfur trioxide, and then there's been a change of sulfur trioxide or an increase in sulfur trioxide, that means that our reactants, our sulfur dioxide and our oxygen should go down by a certain amount, right? Um, because you can't create sulfur trioxide without um, some of your reactants being used up. So how do we do that? Well, I'm just gonna put that 0 0.7 hit. So 0 0.7 mole per liter, okay? And we've gotta be really, really careful to understand what we're exactly doing, right? I'm putting it here because there has been some sort of change and I wanna calculate that change. But remember, normally we put the equilibrium concentrations here, right? But in this case, we're not, it's not the equilibrium concentration. Just So just be aware of that but you'll see why we need to do this in a sec. Okay, so we have 0.7 moles per liter of sulfur trioxide at a particular point. So then to calculate the change, well, the first thing is, okay, we've gone from zero to 0 0.7, so there must have been plus 0 0.7 moles per liter, okay? But then to create this, we need to have used up some of our reactants, okay? So with some of our reactants, we've got to calculate the change, okay? And so just remember, taking into account the mole ratios, which are important in this question, because it's not one-to-one, Okay, so this is two to two, so it means the increase here should be the same as the decrease here. Okay, so that's gonna be 0 0.07, okay? But the change in oxygen, because it's one to two, it's, it's half the amount of sulfur trioxide. So that means it's gonna be um, 0 0.35. So negative 0 0.35, like so, okay? And that'll help us calculate the sort of quote unquote equilibrium amount 
um, at that given point in time. It's not really the equilibrium amount because we don't know. Uh, it's just going to help us calculate that concentration at that point in time. Okay, so if this is 0 0.7, then this would have to be 0 0.3, and then this would have to be 0 0.65. Okay, now for us to then determine whether this is at equilibrium or not, then we've got to use our Q value. Our Q value, a lot of people think Q value and the K value is the same thing. It's, it's actually not. Q value gives us the ratio of our products to our reactants at any point in time. K is specific for the equilibrium amount. Okay, so that's just the key difference. And so for us, we really should be calculating the Q value. Okay, so Q equals... And the formula is going to be SO3 squared, okay, over the concentration of SO2 squared times the concentration of O2, okay? And it's really, really important for us to realize that these are concentrations at any point in time. The key difference between the Q and the K value is the K is the same formula, but it's the equilibrium amount. So normally when I write K, I put EQ there, right? Just to delineate the difference between K and EQ. But we're calculating Q for the time being, so we can get rid of that. All right, and so plugging it in, again, be wary of the squares because of the coefficients here, okay? That's a very common silly mistake that students make, okay? And then plugging that in, okay, we've got 0 0.7 squared over 0 0.3 squared times by 0 0.65, okay? And that should get us 8.376, etc. okay? So then comparing this number to the K value, well, we see, okay, they give us the K value, which is 12.1, okay? But here it's 8.3. So therefore, what we can write here is, therefore, the Q value that we calculated at that point in time, I'm just gonna denote as T, is actually less than the equilibrium amount or, or the equilibrium constant, which means, firstly, the system is not at equilibrium, okay? So that's the first thing, the system is not at equilibrium, because right, if it was, it would be equal to the K value. And then more specifically, it's not asked in the question, but what we can deduce is that because the Q value is less than the K value, meaning this number needs to be bigger and these numbers need to be smaller to get to equilibrium, that's going to mean that reaction is going to proceed to the right-hand side. We're going to create more products and reduce the amount of reactants to increase that Q value to the point where it reaches K. So therefore, the second thing we can deduce from this result is the reaction will proceed to the right. Okay, so the reaction will proceed to the right. All right, and that's it. Okay, so to summarize what we've done in this question, because it is a fairly challenging question. Okay, first thing is to understand what the question is asking us. So the question is saying that the initial amounts of sulfur dioxide and oxygen are given there, so one mole per liter. And then they measure the amount of sulfur trioxide after the reaction has proceeded for a certain amount of time. We don't know how long, but we've let the reaction proceed. Okay. And then we calculate the amount of, or we measure the amount of sulfur trioxide. And we found that to be 0 0.7, but we don't know if that's at equilibrium or not. Okay. And so we have to then find that. So how do we do that? Well, we know, okay, if we've, we started off with zero and we got 0 0.7 moles per liter of sulfur trioxide, then there's got to be a change of plus 0 0.7. Okay, but for that to occur, the reactions have to have gone down in concentration. So using our mole ratios, we know that that would have gone down by the same amount because it's two to two, and this would, would have gone down by half of that. So negative 0.35, okay? And then we calculate what the concentration of these reactants would have been for the product or our sulfur trioxide to be 0.7 moles per liter. Okay, and I'll put an asterisk here because normally we're used to filling these in with the equilibrium amounts, right? The question was say, okay, the equilibrium amount is a certain amount okay but here we don't know if that's the case we can still use the ice table but it's just we just got to be conscious that these are not or they we don't know if they're the equilibrium amounts okay and so once we've got that in then we can plug it in and it's our q formula right and again the reason why it's the q formula is because we don't know if it's at equilibrium so we can't say for sure these are the equilibrium concentrations q is the appropriate symbol to use because that's comparing at any point in time okay so that's so3 squared Okay, on SO2 squared divided by O2 and plugging those numbers in, we get 8.3. And what we notice then, okay, is because 8.3 is less than the 12.1 that they've given us, we know then that the, the equilibrium constant is currently bigger than our Q value. So that means firstly, the system's not at equilibrium because if it was, they'd be equal. And secondly, the reaction is gonna proceed to the right. We need that Q value to get bigger. And so 
for that QVI to get bigger, we need more products, less reactants. Okay, so that's why the equilibrium is going to proceed to the right. Hope that made sense.